Hi folks, this is Guru Federico here from Baja Zubu, Midwest, Minneapolis, Minnesota, USA. Uh, we're trying to do a little vid series on the weapons or the sandata of the Philippines, uh, just because there's so much misinformation out there as to what real sandata is uh, versus some of the fancy swords that you kind of see uh, placed out there. And it's, it's understandable. Uh, I've been researching and collecting these the sandata. Well, I've been collecting it my, my whole life, but I've been actively researching it for the past 20 years. Uh, you know, my collection is fairly extensive. I used to have a website called Federico Moro's Swords that's been cited in a bunch of different articles and whatnot. Uh, it's no longer up because I didn't want to pay for web hosting anymore. Uh, and there's some good information out there, particularly on Moro Swords these days. Uh, but I wanted to cover, start this video off, uh, or this series off, with one of the weapons which is more applicable for uh, Filipino martial arts, uh, particularly Eskrima Arnis and what gets called Kali. Uh, and that is one of the Christian blades, uh, particularly from Visaya. This piece that I'm holding right now is over a hundred years old and dates back to the Spanish-American uh, or Filipino-American War. Uh, and, you know, one thing you can notice immediately compared to some of the newer versions that you might see floating around uh, is the massiveness uh, of this piece. You know, it has a big honking blade, you know, extremely thick uh, spine, nearly half an inch. And that's something that characterizes a lot of the swords from the uh, war period and when I generally talk about the war period I'm talking about the Spanish uh, American War like 1898 uh, 1894 depending on if you want to start with the Katipunan and the revolution uh, and the weapons that they used at that time uh, you know they weren't for fighting a blade like this was not uh, not an agricultural uh, uh, tool they were only for fighting and that's kind of why they're a lot bigger than some of the modern ones you're seeing and a lot more overbuilt uh, You know, we have a penchant here in the West to want to categorize everything and give a name for everything. Uh, over the years, there's been a little controversy in the collecting community, uh, just because you know one collector uh, spoke with a, you know, a very well-known uh, professor in uh, based out of uh, Lete University of Philippines, uh, who saw one of these blades and called it a garab. Uh, a garab literally means you know and. He was obviously uh, referring to the shape of the blade, means sickle. Uh, but realistically, and, and, you know, and he thought this blade was, you know, Rai or from Lete. Uh, whereas if you're going to find something that looks like this now, it's, you're probably going to find it in Cebu and they might call it a Talbon. Uh, but generically, with any of these weapons, uh, you know, throughout Bisaya and a lot of places, you're a lot safer calling it a Sundan. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's not a more specific name, you know, and, you know, I've also heard some people call these penute, uh, you know, for the sharp edge blades. But, you know, Sundang is a safer name just because, you know, even if there are very stylistic uh, names, that can vary just simply from village to village. Uh, one thing that you'll notice that characterizes this kind of blade or weapon, you know, the more typical ones you'll see, do have the sickle blade. I do have a variant that doesn't have a sickle blade. But what you notice on all of these is the thumb rest. And that's why I lean more to this being a Cebuano weapon. Because Cebuanos do like having this uh, uh, ricasso and a thumb rest on, on these. Uh, another thing that you'll notice that distinguishes the old ones beyond the size is the braided rattan here that you are straw weaving on the hilt. Uh, you'll also notice it still has the tulip uh, pommel as well as uh, tokub or sheath. Uh, uh, this little flare on the end which kind of hails to more of a mariner fast. Uh, and yeah these weapons are extremely hard to find. It took me many many years uh, to find this one, 
and there's a saying from some traditional collectors is that you you don't find these pieces they find you so uh, just wanted to share a little information uh, about this weapon uh, and despite the size and the weight of it you know if it is very well balanced and easy to manipulate and move uh, and even more so you know with good body mechanics so uh, just something to kind of watch out for if you ever do see one or have the fortune of getting one uh, these are the weapons that you know our, our grandmasters teachers would have used uh, you know and this is something like uh, that even someone like Tatang Ilistrismo it predates his era so uh, these are very very rare pieces and if you do have the fortune of finding them one you know cherish it and take care of them so thanks folks hope you got some good information and uh, we'll do some more <laughs>